Welcome to another episode of InRange. We think today of military surplus as being a relatively modern phenomenon, but that's actually not true at all. After every major conflict, there's this influx, or has been, an influx of military equipment, gear, and firearms that have made their way into the civilian marketplace. And after the Civil War and the Indian Wars was no exception. So what I'm doing today is shooting a two-gun match, but I'm shooting a two-gun match with all gear that would have been military surplus circa 1870-1880. So in that regard, we have here, this is a reproduction, but an excellent example thereof, of the Spencer Carbine. In the Civil War, at the end of the war, 1865, this was the most issued carbine on the Union side of the conflict. And of course, the first really militarily issued repeater. Seven rounds in the magazine, sort of a lever action, uh, shooting this, in this instance, 5650 center fire. The ones in the Civil War were 5656, which were rim fire. However, so many of these were made up until 1869 that even though they stopped production in 1869, ammunition for these continued until the late 1920s. And the massive amount of these made, this, made them their way into the civilian marketplace as military surplus. And 5650 is not a new cartridge. It is a centerfire conversion of the 5656 and many original carbines are 5650 as well by just replacing the breech block. So in the civilian marketplace these became a very common weapon on the frontier. They were, were, were renowned for their durability and reasonably good firepower for being a repeater. What they are not renowned for is necessarily their direct accuracy or their speed of fire like so for example you'd see with a Henry or 1866. But this was absolutely a surplus weapon that made its way into a large portion of the civilian populace, especially on the frontier. So this will be my surplus long arm that I'll be shooting today. The military experimented with these, which are Blakesley tubes. It is a leather box that holds reloading tubes in it. They were not well liked and not well used for reloading the Spencer carbine. There's a lot of little issues with them and they're kind of awkward to hold on to and put on your belt, but I'll be using it today because this is a timed event and I want the fastest reloads possible. As a result, these would also be something that you could ostensibly find on the surplus market. Very close to. And for my pistol, this might surprise people that this would be a surplus item, I'm shooting a Schofield revolver. This is a reproduction made by Uberti, an excellent example. Actually, this is a really nice gun. Um, these were issued, or attempted to be issued to the military uh, along with the Colt Single Action Army. And while the, most of the men and the soldiers and the actual military determiners, <laughs> most of the military guys making the determinations about what should be issued, realized that this was a better, more tactically uh, advanced firearm. However, it was a chambered in 45 Schofield, which is not 45 Colt. The single action army is already in the field. There was ammunition and supply chain for that. And when they tried to supply the soldiers in the field that had Schofield with Schofield ammo, and the soldiers who had single action armies with Colt ammo, the reverse of course happened, and men with Schofields got Colt ammo, and men with Colts got Schofield ammo. Now, the benefit of that for the men with the Colts was that the Schofield ammo would work in a Colt because it was nothing more than a shortened, shortened 45 Colt cartridge. But the guys with a Schofield that got 45 Colt didn't have pistol ammunition. As a result, they just decided to standardize, ironically, on the 45 Schofield ammunition, called the 1877 cartridge, but keeping the Colt single action army as the standard pistol sidearm for the military, thus turning the Schofield into a surplus firearm that made its way into civilian hands relatively quickly.
People are going to say, why not just take two at a time? It's harder than it looks. I'm not using a cartridge belt. When you think of the Old West, everyone thinks of cartridge belt, with the cartridges in little loops. But during the Civil War, and a lot of people after the Civil War, including civilians, didn't use cartridge belts, but they just used a box on their belt or even a haversack or a bag to load ammunition out of. So this is a really interesting day in that I'm shooting a two-gun match with military surplus, but military surplus of the 1870s. Okay, so the match is over. You can see when the ranges got within 50 yards, I was having no issues hitting whatsoever. And the sights lend themselves to that because they are really not very granular, very wide and open. And for combat shooting at close range, these work fine. But for pre precision fire further out, these are challenging. You can flip it up, but the sight picture is still just as bad. It doesn't really make a difference. So, at any rate, about the Spencer. The first round loading issue to get into the chamber is partially because of my reloading. I left those cartridges a little on the shorter side of the overall length. And if your cartridges are too long, you will have a jam that you can't clear. And if they're too short, you have a little bit of that bobbling running the action to chamber around as you saw. If they're perfect, then it's perfect. So this gun is peculiarly sensitive to the overall length of the cartridges. Even more so, as I said earlier, than the lever guns like the Winchesters. But the goal of today was to shoot what would have been surplus military weapons in the 1870s and 1880s. And in that regard, that's what I did. This 1865 Spencer, and this time it's 650 centerfire. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, the 1875 Schofield. So in this regard, um, what would I say? If I was a person on the frontier, if I favored power over fire supremacy, the Spencer is not your worst choice. It's definitely better than a number of muzzle loaders, any muzzle loader, for sure. But it is not better than single shots. And on the civilian market, you have like the Remington rolling block and things like that. You would not yet really have trapdoor carbines or trapdoor rifles on the surplus market. Those would be military arms. But ironically, the single shot trapdoor rifle is faster to run, I think faster to run, and easier to get good hits with than the Spencer, and I can see why the military surplus these out after the war. However, if you were a cavalryman during the Civil War, and you got off your horse, you had this with seven shots in the tube, and the ability to reload relatively quickly, uh, the Spencer was definitely a force multiplier. And I can see why, at bargain basement prices for surplus weapons, why these were extremely popular and common on the frontier. Lots were made, ammunition was available, and you could purchase one at a reasonable price. Now, of course, the Winchesters were never surplus because the Winchesters were never military arms. The 1860 Henry was used to a certain degree, but they purchased them personally. The 1866 never was, and nor was the 1873. So, if I was a civilian on the frontier and I had all the money in the world and I could buy anything I wanted, I would not go with the Spencer. My choice of rifle would start with the 1860 Henry. I would prefer the 1866 because it has the Kingsgate loading system. Both of them still chambered in 44 Henry rimfire, which is sufficient for what those are for. But if I could, I would go with the 1873 Winchester in 44-40 or 44 Winchester centerfire, because that is a more powerful cartridge. So if my, for my long arm, again, I would not go with the Spencer, I the Henry with the Winchester, the 73 Winchester. But if I was rele relegated to the cost of a surplus weapon, the Spencer is not a bad choice. In regards to what I would purchase for my sidearm, I would, I would essentially avoid every other pistol on the market if I could get a Schofield. The sights on the Schofield are not superb, but the Schofield brings so much to the table in terms of tactical handling, fast reload. It's a sturdy, durable gun in your hand, easy to point. And at the ranges you would normally be using a pistol with, this is controversial, we don't have to worry about the sights as much as we think. At any rate, I want to thank everyone out there that's watching this that is a Patreon supporter because this channel has no sponsors, no overlords. The Spencer Company that went out of business in 1869 did not sponsor this video, and Uberti did not sponsor this video for the Schofield. All if everything you saw today, the ammunition, the black powder, these guns, all possible because of sponsors via Patreon. I want to thank each and every one of you for keeping this channel alive. We are not monetized on YouTube by my own choice. Receive no money from YouTube or YouTube Red, only Patreon. If you'd like to consider it, you can find us at patreon.com slash inrangetv. If you can't, I do understand the other thing you can really do to help me is subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. You could be an organic algorithm when YouTube won't necessarily promote this content for me. Thanks for watching.